going to discuss connections and components. Um, I want to say this is not a PCI handbook seminar. It's really my introduction to special considerations that may not be emphasized in the handbook. Um, I hope that all of the audience will, will get something from my perspective. Um, I, being a specialty engineer for much of my work, um, what I hope this is, is a, an explanation of some of the considerations and nuances in precast, pre-stressed concrete parking garage design from a specialty engineer to structural engineers and architects who may have broader concerns or experience, maybe the structural engineer record. For the specialty engineers who are in the audience, I hope that, again, my, my perspective might give you some things to think about. Before I get going, I think that it's probably well known in the, in the news that yesterday that there was a major collapse uh, of a precast concrete parking structure during its erection in uh, Miami, in Dade County, in uh, South Florida. And certainly, first, uh, my sympathy, and I think all of our sympathies, go out to the construction workers and their families who were involved and the losses that were involved. Um, I've gotten a number of questions um, about what I know, and frankly, it's very little little more than what you see on the news, except that I can look at the pictures and see some, and the explanations, and see perhaps with some insight some of the conditions that were surrounding it. It was an erection collapse. That is, it was not a finished structure. It was during its assembly. And it was described as a pancake failure, which is a top-down, something happened at the higher level, and the, the garage collapsed from the top down. Um, what I did see or could see from the photographs that were available it is that it, it was an untopped double T system that uses core strips, that is cast in place concrete sections at the ends for cord and for the final tie to knit the structure together. Um, this is certainly the most vulnerable stage that any parking garage has because all of that precast is up and hopefully braced but none of the cast in place concrete that does the final tying of the garage is actually in place. You don't see any of that in the section of the photographs that failed. So again, a lot of things can happen. I don't have an idea of what caused it or the extent, but it is again the most dangerous and, and, and difficult time during the course of the entire structure's existence is getting it in its final place and, and I guess only the investigations for the future will tell us what lesson we need to learn from this particular uh, tragedy. Now, what I'm going to cover in the three parts today, I'm going to talk in the first part about connections. In the second part, I'm going to talk about horizontal components, uh, double T's, inverted T beams, spandrel beams, slabs, and stairs. And in the third part, I'm going to cover vertical components, uh, columns, ramp walls, shear walls, and stair walls. And Again, it's going to be an overview with a point of looking at, at uh, some considerations of some things you may want to observe as you are either designing a parking garage or reviewing the design that may be submitted by a specialty engineer. The objectives are to provide an understanding for considerations for connection design for pre-stressed concrete parking structures to include load paths, anchorage to concrete, loading conditions, and the types of connections that can be used. Uh, I want to provide an understanding of consideration for horizontal components for pre-stressed concrete parking structures about double T's, inverted T beams, spandrel beams, and flat slabs and stairs. And I want to provide an understanding 
for the considerations for vertical components that include the interior and exterior columns, ramp walls, shear walls, and stair walls.